don't care much for Strata myself, sir. But in this case, I think it would be best if you took his side. Uh, I'll think it over. Anything else? We'll have to clear the northern tip of the woods. But first, I'll have to go and inspect it. Very well. Once you've done that, come to me and we'll discuss the matter. Yes, sir. Tell me what happened in Scarlet. You've done well, lad. I'm sorry for your loss. You must be all done in. Why don't you go to the kitchen and have a good meal? Sorrow is easier to bear on a full stomach. Oh, damn it, I'm hungry. I heard about your father. They say he was a swordsman who moved to the countryside to make fortunes. I'm sure he had his reasons. He had a fine reputation. It's a great loss. Ah, oh, Milady. 
You are fortunate our good lady Stephanie of Talmberg has graced us with her presence. My lady, I'm honored. So this is our brave young man. Welcome, lad. Bojena here will take care of you. No doubt you're tired and hungry. <laughs> Indeed. How could he not be, poor soul? After everything he's been through, he must be as hungry as a bear. Aren't you, young master? Here you are, then. Eat your fill. And a little wine to wash it down. Thank you, my lady. <clears throat> when you're done, you can go and rest with the grooms in the outer valley. No, that won't do, Sir Robard. After all he's been through, he deserves a proper bed. Let him sleep in a lodge in the courtyard. Certainly, my lady. Young Henry here is overwhelmed by your generosity. Oh, yes, yes, thank you, my lady. May God reward you for your kindness. Eat up now. You're in capable hands, so I'll leave you to it. Good night. Good night. Good night, ma'am. When you've done, you can sleep in the bedchamber of the courtyard lodge. And don't forget to take off those filthy boots before getting into bed. Greetings. What do you need? What Nevin's name happened there? Where's that chamber for me to sleep? Evans, are you still confused after what happened to you? It's in the lodge in the courtyard. Thank you. Goodbye. Hmm. How ill mannered.
day the patrols will be doubled. Keep your eyes peeled. If you see anything out of the ordinary, report it immediately. Understood? Yes, sir. Yes? It is I, Henry. Forgive the intrusion. I didn't wake you, boy, did I? Uh, my lady, uh, um, no, no, not at all. But what brings you here at this hour? I thought you could do with a little wine. It's just what you need to help you sleep. My lady, um, thank you. You really shouldn't. You could have sent a sermon. I was going to, but to tell you the truth, I couldn't sleep either. I thought of you while saying my prayers. How awful it must have been for you. I came to offer you solace, to let you know you're not alone. Thank you. Thank you kindly. You're welcome. Now, Henry, I know this is all very new and strange for you. But I want you to feel at home here. You're not to worry about anything except getting better. God knows you've been through a terrible ordeal. I know what it is to be left alone in the world. Although your loss is much greater. But with God's help, the pain will ease in time. And it can help to talk about it, if you feel like it. I'll tell you what happened. It was terrible and unexpected. The day started just like any other. Father sent me into town on some errands. I went to the tavern to buy ale for Father. I know it's a job for a groom, but I didn't mind, because my girl Bianca worked there. I courted her a while and we agreed to meet in the evening, but our meeting was never to happen. Oh, dear boy. When I'd done all the errands, I headed back home. I promised Father I'd help him with his work, and I was looking forward to it. He was forging a sword for Sir Radzi. The sword was taking shape when Sir Radzi himself came to have a look at it. He praised Father's work and said that with his smithing skills, he could easily make a living in Prague or Vienna. You don't say... But Sigismund's horde was already on the horizon, ready to attack the town. I saw smoke on the horizon from a village Sigismund pillaged on the way to our town, which was soon to meet the same fate. God have mercy. And then death descended on Scalitz. Father told me to take shelter in the castle while he went to get mother. She was stranded in the town, surrounded by Sigismund butchers. And then I saw him knocking down one cumin after another. and never saw him fight like that. But then the leader of Sigismund's raiding party, a knight in full armour, saw father and charged at him. He cut down my father without a thought. And then he turned on my mother. And he murdered her in cold blood. You poor boy. May the Lord have mercy on their souls. I ran to the castle like our neighbours to take cover, but I didn't make it. I had to find another way to save myself. The men on the battlements called down to me to flee to Talmberg and warn you. I was lucky I knew a concealed path around the castle. I needed a horse to get to the safety of Talmberg and to warn you all. And with all that was happening, you thought of others like a good Christian. Then I heard a scream. It 
it was Teresa, the mill wench. She'd been caught by a gang of human savages who planned to violate her. I had Sir Radzik's sword, and even though there were several of them and they were better armed, I had to try and save her. I wanted there to be at least one person I'd helped. And I succeeded, even though it almost cost me my life. After that, I stole a horse from them and rode off. Like a valiant knight. I'll never forget the horror. It will haunt me for the rest of my life. That's terrible. How could something like that happen? God alone knows why he lets such things happen. Oh, you poor boy. I understand your grief, but God is not to blame for the ills of this world. That is the work of Satan and those who do his bidding. Those who are corrupted by greed, envy, and pride. You must not lose faith, whatever life brings. Fate has not been merciful to me and my husband either. Although in comparison to the horrors you went through. I was young when I married my husband. It was my father's wish. Divish was a lot older than I, but a woman must bear her lot. Shortly after our marriage, before I even got a look at Talmberg, the castle was stormed and my husband was imprisoned. Really? My husband had some quarrel with Sir Havel Medek of Valdek, who decided to resolve it by force. He stormed the castle, burned down the village of Probislavitz, and killed many of our men, even the old Chamberlain. He imprisoned my husband in the castle and put his own garrison there. That's awful. I was barely 18 years old and all of a sudden, I was left alone with Sir Robert. We didn't know what to do. We went to Prague to appeal to the king and sought help from Divish's friends, but all to no avail. We tried for years, but it seemed I was destined to be left alone and my husband to rot in jail in his own castle. Years, you say? Seven years. That's how long it took before Havel was condemned as an enemy of the crown. And even then, he refused to surrender the castle and release my husband. In the end, I raised the money to pay a ransom. And only then, by the grace of Lord Jesus, did I finally lay eyes on my husband once more. Seven years. And was Havel punished for it? Never. And after seven years, my husband returned to me an infirm old man. Sir Divish seems like a good, strong man. Well, certainly, only he has many concerns. He had to rebuild Talmberg. After he was released, the king appointed him Burgrave of Prague Castle, and he was very busy. He had no time for me at all. But at least we were in the city, and there was something going on. And now, we're here. My lady, you're still young and beautiful. Your best years are still ahead of you. Would that that were true, lad. Would it were true. But what am I doing bothering you with this? You have troubles enough of your own. I'll go and let you sleep. I enjoyed our little talk, Henry. Good night, and God bless. Good night, my lady.
Henry, <sighs> wake up. You don't want to miss this. <sighs> what is it? What's happening? Come to the battlements. One of our patrols reported a company heading here from Scallops. Daunted by their numbers, heed my command, and all will end well. Hey, you men down there, tell the people outside the walls to prepare for attack. Quickly, do you understand? What's going on? I don't know. It doesn't make sense. Why would Sigismund advance on Talmud in the night? Especially since he's lost the element of surprise after the raid on Scallops. Maybe it's not him. Then who is it? The scouts Jivish sent to Scallops to spy on Sigismund, said he'd set up camp and he's getting ready to storm the castle. And so Radzig is an experienced soldier. He'd surely hold the castle for quite some time. It doesn't make sense. What else did the spies say? Not much of anything. Before they could get close enough, this huge storm started. And you were right. Sigismund has a hell of a lot of soldiers, including all manner of mercenaries. An army like that costs a fortune. Well, anyway, we'll find out when they get there. Oh. Who else, Robert? Sir Antig. What a relief. Is his lordship there with you? Yes, sir. He is right here. What are you doing up so late, Divish? At your age, you need a good night's sleep. <laughs> well, Rantic, you didn't exactly pick the best time for an outing either. In a big hurry? It was a bit of a scramble, all right. Believe it or not, this tempest is a godsend for me and my men. As my old granddad used to say, better a sore throat than a slit throat. 
I'd say your grandfather was a wise man. Your messenger told us what happened. Messenger? The lad you sent to warn us. He's alive? He made it to you? He's here with me. He only got away by the skin of his teeth, though. Thank God. A brave young man. But tell me, friend, how on earth did you manage to get away? Thank God for this tempest. When it began, Sigismund's Tatars crawled into their holes and left a storm in the castle for more clement weather. We were able to sneak out right under their noses. The Lord be praised. We wouldn't have stood a chance against them. Would you like to spend the night in Tumber? No, no. When Sigismund finds the castle empty tomorrow, he might come looking for us. We'd only be exposing you to danger. Without me and my men, he has no call to attack you. Well, what will you do then? We'll march to Ratai. It's only a short way, and there we'll have a better chance of defense and enough room for all of these people. If Sigismund should come, better bend your knee, Divish. There's no point dying in a battle that's futile. You're right there. Is that boy still with you? I'm here, sir. You have courage, lad. That I can't deny. I am sorry about what happened. Would you care to join us? I'd like to, sir, but first I have to return to Scalitz. Are you mad? What do you want there? I can't leave my mother and father. I won't leave their corpses rotting in the street. I'll join you once I've taken care of them. Don't even think of going back there, you donkey. Are you tired of living? But sir! Quiet! I'm sorry about your father, but getting killed as well won't help him. Divish, make sure that lad doesn't budge from Talmberg until things quieten down. Not to worry, friend. Anyway, he's injured and needs to recover. I'll lock him up here as if he were Havel of Baldic. <laughs> I see you've grown a thick skin since your tribulation, sir. But thank you. We'll meet again when circumstances are more favorable. Farewell. Farewell, friend, and good fortune. Give my regards to Sir Hanish. I will. And good luck to you and your people, too. These are dark times. Move out! Men, tonight we'll have triple patrol. Good day to you. What do you think I about that surprise keep a close eye on night? everything nearby. I was Singers surprised all right. Sent spies, <laughs> and likely men as well to follow I'm the glad them people were safe. Now he knows they've I'm just as glad it weren't Sigismund. For sure he'll come here in the end too. But now at least we've got time to get ready for him. Maybe he'll leave Townburg B. Maybe, maybe not. Could be he was only out to get Sir Radzik because he's Wenceslas's headman. The Scarlet's is a rich town, so there was plenty of loot for the taking. Two birds with one stone. So he might be satisfied and leave us alone. Reckon we'll see soon enough, one way or the other. Hmm. By the way, Henry. It is Henry, ain't it? I was Henry, sorry to hear about your parents. They've gone on to better things. Farewell. What is it you need? I could use an extra pair of eyes, and yours are keen. Will you keep watch of the battlements with my men? Is that a request or an order? I'd rather it was a request you answered yes to. Of course I'll help. 
I'll have to pay you back somehow after all you've done to me. Splendid. And don't worry. I'll tell the men to relieve you later. Farewell. God be with you. Wandering around like a stray sheep. Must be your first watch, eh? I don't think anything much will be happening today. You can just lean against the wall and wait till morning. I'll show you what's what. I will. Thank you. Let's go. 
Islands. To see how the self-appointed king wins the love and respect of his loyal subjects. Indeed, Robard. Sigismund of Luxembourg has a rare talent for winning people over to his cause. You may be in for a surprise. I don't think he will set his heathen dogs on us today. Greetings, Lord of Tomberg. Shit. That's the bastard who let the attack of Scullis and killed my parents. Don't be an idiot. Do you want to end up like them? I am Sir Mark Wart von Aulitz. I come in the name of Sigismund of Luxembourg, King of Hungary and Croatia, who has resolved to strike against those who disrupt Concord in the land and to restore order in the name of his brother, King Wenceslaus IV. Restore order by burning and pillaging the king's estates. Greetings, Sir Mark Vart. The efforts of the king's brother to bring order to this chaotic land are undoubtedly noble. It seems to me, though, that he and his army have somewhat strayed. As Burgrave of Prague Castle, I am entirely beholden to the king, and here in Townburg, divine peace reigned until your arrival. To what, then, do we owe the honor of your visit? Yesterday, his majesty took action against the enemy of the kingdom, Sir Ratzik Kobila, who has been using the silver from the Scalitz mine to fund insurrection against the crown. Unfortunately, the insurgent escaped. Would you happen to know, noble sir, where he might be at this time? As far as I know, the Sir Radzik of which you speak is the king's hetman at Scalitz. I find it hard to imagine that he would rebel against our king. Nevertheless, I can assure you that Sir Radzik is not at Talberg. He would be a fool indeed to flee from one castle where he has little chance of defense to another where he has even less. Or do you take the view that my humble manner is any obstacle to your army? Am I to inform the king's end that Zeratsi Kobila is not a Tarnberg and that he has your loyalty. Sir Radzig Kobila is not here, and I have no intentions of getting embroiled in affairs from which I have nothing to gain. Very well, sir. As you wish. I will relay your words to the king in the hope he will be as well disposed as you seem to be. Those who have clean consciences and good will may find themselves well disposed even at moments like this, when there is little cause for joy. Farewell, sir. Auf Wiedersehen. My lord, you have my utmost admiration. Get on with you, Robart.
Look out. My respects to you. Can you tell me who I can buy something from or sell to? Aye. Botaba, the pond keeper, is your man. He ought to be by the granary. At least that's the last place I saw him. What do you think about Sigismund withdrawing? It was a stroke of good luck. I know everyone says how clever Sigismund is and all that, but it was a dangerous situation. That Sigismund is awful unpredictable. He abducts the king, raids towns, brings foreign mercenaries into the heart of our country. God alone knows what he'll get up to next. May the Lord watch over you. Jesus Christ be praised. Why did Sigismund burn down Scalitz and then come here too? That's war for you, lad. Certain lords have resolved to take things into their own hands and eliminate anyone who doesn't share their view. Unfortunately, Sir Ratzig is one of those. And what's more, he was sitting on a pile of silver that could help King Wenceslas' allies. What happened in Gutenberg? Gutenberg? Well, I'm just a simple soldier, but the good lord gave me ears. And I've heard some things from Sir Divish and from those who fled from Sigismund's pillaging. Were there many? Indeed. But it was the Kutenberg mercenaries who came to see me, because I knew them from before. I see. Listen, lad. These are all games of the high aristocracy. In Prague, a cabal of nobles rebelled against King Wenceslas, wealthy aristocrats who took against our king for reasons of their own. There's no doubt Sigismund had his fingers in the whole affair. Him and Wenceslas's cousin, Jobst. And that cabal helped him abduct the king. So then why did Sigismund attack Kuttenberg? Why do you think? I suppose because it has a strategic position and good fortifications, so it can be used as a base for raids, giving you control of the whole territory and good defences too, if, if you need them. <laughs> Not at all. King Charles, may God grant him eternal glory, built Prague into a proper royal city, while King Wenceslas took a liking to Kutenberg. After Prague, it's the most important city in Bohemia, in the entire Holy Roman Empire. He who commands the Kutenberg silver is king. So Kutenberg sided with Wenceslas because he favoured it? Now you're starting to understand. When Sigismund imprisoned Wenceslas and took control of Prague, the people of Kutenberg began to raise an army against him. So with the attack on Kutenberg, Sigismund killed two birds with one stone. He defeated Wenceslas' most powerful allies before they could stand against him and also gained immense wealth. Where did these humans come from anyway? I don't know much about them, only what the Chamberlain said, that they came to Hungary from the east and settled there. They're godless barbarians and merciless fighters. The nobles used to say the Hungarian king shouldn't enlist them, because they dishonor our rules of warfare. But when there's power and money to be had, it seems that honor isn't worth my spit. And believe me, it's always about power and money. So, Robard, I need to get to Scalitz. What would you do there, lad? Sigismund might have left, but the place will be swamped with robber barons, brigands, deserters, and other vermin. And anyway, your lord commanded you to stay here. My parents died there, and I won't leave them to be ravaged by dogs. I have to bury them. Good God, boy. Do you want to throw your life away for those who can never get theirs back? Do you think that's what they'd want? Forget it.
strange clothes and iron masks on their faces. Good day to you. What do you need? Can we trade? If you've got the coin. Take care now. Potom sa ja, potom sa ja, tvoje vývanie sa ja. Them ripped the strange clothes and iron masks on their faces. Them. All with fire. I saw them.
Damn. Jesus Christ. Your clothes. Were you assaulted? Damn bandits, may they burn in hell. Sigismund's visit this morning was pretty alarming, wasn't it? And no mistake. That army of his is enormous. It's a good thing Sir Divish is such a fine speaker, or they'd have squashed us like bugs. Goodbye. Look out! Good morning. If I needed some food, who should I ask? Who do you think, young man? Me, of course. And if you want something extra, I could help you out with that too. I'd like to buy something from you. Of course, lad.
The Lord be praised. What's on your mind? My lady, I hope you weren't unduly distressed by the arrival of Sigismund's army this morning. Well, it was to be expected. And thanks to God's mercy and my good husband, there was no more bloodshed. But it's something else that distresses me. Maybe my mind deceives me. But I have an evil foreboding. You, my lady? Surely not. No evil could possibly come to you. I fear something bigger and worse will come. That Sigismund is only another omen of imminent evil. Of great evil. I would like to ask your assistance, my lady, if I may be so bold. What's the matter, lad? I need to get out of the castle, and your husband is keeping me here by force. Why, for the love of God, would you want to leave the castle? My parents are lying in the mud of skullets at the mercy of dogs and jackdaws. I can't just leave them there. That's terrible. May the Lord have mercy on their souls. But how can I help you, Henry? I don't want your death on my conscience. If I could just get past the guard at the gate somehow. But, but you can. If you wear a proper suit of armour, and if he can't see your face, he won't recognise you and he'll let you go. Good thinking. And where can I get the armour? At the armoury? Where's that? In the gate tower. But the soldiers sleep in other places around the castle too, and you might find armour nearby. It's rather embarrassing, but if I'm to pay a bribe, I need money. and Unfortunately, I don't have any. How would you? Don't worry your head about it. This should be enough. Thank you, my lady. I will repay you, I swear. And I'll certainly ask where I'm going. You could tell them Sir Robard sent you to Ujitz to ask the parish priest how the folk there are faring. That sounds reasonable. Thank you, my lady. I must go now. God bless. My lady. God be with you. I'm sorry. Do I know you? <laughs> it's me, my lady. Henry. I didn't recognize you at all. I still think you should stay here in the safety of the castle, Henry. But I see your heart is drawing you away from here. God go with you.
Jesus Christ be praised. Farewell. God be with you. What can I do for you? May the Lord watch over you. Jesus Christ be praised. What do you think about the flight of the Scarlet's folk? I'd say Sir Rodzik is a fine lord. He made the most of the situation and saved his subjects. You don't see that very often. He was lucky that big storm came. But that's just it. Something happens by chance and you turn it to your advantage. There's not many capable of thinking so fast. Good luck to you. Day to you. What do you need? I need to get out of here. 
Says who? I've never seen you before in my life. And that's odd, seeing as how you're wearing our colors. I'm Sir Robar's messenger. He's sending me to Ujits to find out if Sigismund's army has been giving them trouble. I might believe you if I knew who you were. Who the hell are you? You know who I am. I have to get out to take care of my parents. Everyone will understand why you let me go. It's the Christian thing to do. Please. Do you think I'm a total idiot? My master will be furious if I let you out. And when Captain Robard isn't happy, he makes damn sure nobody else is either. Ah, oh, damn it. On the other hand, you've dressed up so nicely, and it's a shame to let it go to waste. The old man won't like it, but I'll act stupid and I won't get worse than a bollocking. If you make it worth my while, of course. Three? More! Now you're speaking my language. Good luck then. Try not to get yourself killed.